The origin of injuria is often stemmed from the place of birth for a purse of a person. For example, in Lipari, if you are from um, the municipality of Piano Conte, you would be called U Piano Cuntaro, or similarly from Quattropani, you would be U Quattropanaro. It may also stem from a physical characteristics or maybe even an attitude. For example, U Zoppo, the one that uh, limps, U Tirchio, the miser or the penny pincher. It is often common to find in duty related to people's occupation or work. For example, la uh, vocaticchio, which uh, means a cheap lawyer, coming from the word l'avvocato, and la vocaticchio, you know, uno di quattro soldi. Or another popular one is a uh, mammano, and that was uh, often referred to midwives or um, women that delivered um, children at home. So some of these surnames include the Bonicas, the Caparellas, Chincotta, but we don't know where they actually came from. They just appear out of nowhere. The records don't really tell us. And so it's hard for us to know where those people with those surnames came from. On the other side, we have a list of a few soldiers that were in the garrison on Libida around about 1610. And it's obvious that those surnames sound very Spanish in origin. But what we don't see in that early period are other familiar surnames that we generally associate with the Aeolian, Aeolian Islands. Sometimes when we hear one of these surnames, we automatically think of a particular island or a particular town because we know sometimes it only occurs in that town or on that island. But if you go back to the 1600 or earlier, the 1500s, you do not see these surnames anywhere. So they must have arrived at some point afterwards. Church, it's of Vicenzo in Stromboli. I'm sure a lot of you have been inside this church. It's dedicated to none other than Vicente Ferrer, who in Italian is known as Vincenzo Ferreri. He is the patron of Stromboli. A very unusual choice of a, a patron for the island of Stromboli. Now, here uh, is the statue inside that church. Uh, Vincenzo uh, Ferreri uh, was, uh, died in 1419. He died before the Inquisition uh, was introduced, but he laid the groundwork for uh, a lot of the pressure being put on Jews to convert. Uh, that church in Stromboli uh, was built in the late, in, late 1600s and it was uh, essentially funded by many of the people who were coming from uh, Lipari and um, the Barneos were, were, were among them. Why, why on earth would they suggest the name Vicente Ferrer? Well, quite obviously for political and security reasons. Um, it's a sign of, of loyalty, you know, we're conversos, uh, we're real Christians and we're willing to, to um, make our patron Vicente Ferrer, um, who, um, who, 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 who um, got us into line, you might say. There are a couple of reasons why people do take DNA tests. One is to predict their uh, genetic ethnicity. So to see where they uh, their ancestors came from, which is always one fun to, to find out if you're sometimes you're not sure what, or how much of the um, uh, DNA from what a certain part of uh, the world you come you come from um, to make connections. So you help uh, helps you find new family connections, find cousins around the world. They may have more information about your side of the family. They may unblock your brick walls in your family tree as you're not able to find any other resources that can take your family tree further but they may have found it in the past or they know about it that's always useful um, also through an adoption some people um, are finding missing parents or close family members 
um, that they want to look look out for um, through through ancestry DNA and all these uh, DNA sites. I will be saying a lot of DNA in this presentation as well, so <laughs> get ready for that. Um, also. Um, also, of course, genealogy purposes, finding um, ancestors to confirm your research. And this is the big one that I love. It really helps to prove or disprove um, your documented family tree connections. Um, just yeah, to really confirm, because you could be going up the wrong tree. And especially on the East Leo, yeah, um, with so many surn common surnames, it can be the case. And of course, there's a fair bit of shared DNA that we all have as well. Without the illegitimate children, there were also uh, those uh, babies with the legitimate origin who were abandoned by parents because of great poverty, hunger, unable to feed their children, in, um, especially during the nurse nursing time. According to the documents uh, I analyzed, uh, you can see that other cases of abandonment were sickness of the babies and um, of the mother, the presence of the father in prison and the mother's death uh, during childbirth. I could also find that kids could be abandoned because of violent discussion within a family. So the father of the baby for revenge could abandon um, uh, his or uh, his child. There were also kidnapping of uh, the illegitimate babies by their natural father, who did not to, uh, want to marry the mother of his child. And moreover, baby could be abandoned also because of pandemics, epidemics, or outbreaks. So they get a lot of these, how would you say, like symbols, all these, these words that you find on a, a tombstone. Now, it's a good way to really know, um, you really get to know uh, the information that you're looking at uh, when you go to Leopardy. So the, I guess the most important ones that I find is this, and this also, in, this also is very useful in the, the records, uh, when looking in the records. So you have the term full, which indicates the, um, the father is deceased when this person has died. So it will normally have full, and this in case this one's got Francesco, which means when uh, Felice died in 1953, his father had already passed away. And this also goes the same in the records. If you see the full be before the father's name or the mother's name, it would mean that uh, they had deceased before the record was, um, was created. Again, and then you have D. Which, mean, uh, which means the father was still alive um, when, when this person had uh, passed away. Um, as you can see, it's got D'Angelo, which, um, yeah, which means that um, um, the father, Angelo, was still alive when Anna Ferrazzo uh, had died in 1926. So it's important to interview elderly relatives as soon as possible. Unfortunately, I left my run too late and all of my grandparents, great uncles and aunties already had passed away, unfortunately. So we really need to ask as many questions as possible. And sometimes it's a matter of asking the right question. So you need to be asking about which island they were from, which town, birth dates, baptisms, marriages, names of their parents and grandparents, departure date from the islands, the name of the ship, the arrival date in Australia, deaths, and who's still living on the islands. Uh, I still have some relatives on the islands whom I have met myself. And then you need to cross-check this information with other uh, sources, because sometimes the information we're given is not always accurate. The other thing I want to mention is uh, respect. Sometimes, uh, there are skeletons in the cupboard and there are skeletons in the cupboard for my family tree. So we need to show respect if people don't want to divulge information and are sensitive to the needs of those people. We also need to remember that in today's society with um, the rights of individuals, some people don't want their birth date published. Uh, my book was for private circulation only, so 
um, it's not going out to the general community. So that sensitivity is important, I think. Here we are in the foyer of the museum. What you're about to see in the rooms that follow tell the story of the great exodus from the Aeolian Islands to Australia and the Americas. It covers the 100 years between the unification of Italy up until the economic boom of the 1960s, which officially confirms the end of the Italian migration phenomenon. In those 100 years, the archipelago lost almost half of its entire population and entered into a period of decline and stagnation. But that is, this is not where the story begins. The exodus actually began in the middle of what was an, an extraordinary golden age on the islands during the mid 19th century. So let us now move on to into the exhibition where we will examine the dynamics of what happened to precipitate their departure. And then to what became of the new communities that were established overseas. So mind your step everybody as we move through the rooms. This week, I'm going to show you how we, how we make um, Ikosi Bushi. My mum calls them Kosa Bushi. I call them Bushi Kasa. So here we have 12 eggs at room temperature. Always have your eggs at room temperature when you're making biscotti. We've got three cups of sugar. Also, three cups of olive oil. We have two tablespoons of cinnamon. It's freshly ground cinnamon. I love to ground my own cinnamon because it smells beautiful and tastes even nicer. I have one teaspoon of camombo, that's cloves, and the rind of a very large lemon. If the lemons are medium or small, just use two. 